goes as the sincerest form of flattery, um, we as a community should all have the courage of our convictions and when we make something, say that we made it, not try and pretend that Coca-Cola made it. Um, so uh, I don't think that's a serious restriction on anything that we might want to do. Um, copyright. Copyright is a little bit more involved. Um, in particular, the law is not all that well written. Uh, if you look at Section 4 of the Appropriate Act in the United Kingdom, it has a definition of sculpture that says sculpture includes a cast or model, cast or model made for purposes of sculpture, um, <laughs> which uh, the philosophers among you will see lacks a certain amount of uh, usefulness as a definition. Um, but what we're talking about here uh, is two possibilities in the three-dimensional objects printed by the machine. Uh, figurines, obviously, if you make a little Mickey Mouse figurine, maybe Mickey Mouse is copyright, copyright by Disney, and so maybe you've infringed their copyright in that figure. Um, or images on surfaces. If you emboss an image on the surface of uh, something that is copyright, uh, then you've infringed the copyright. Um, and again, the law is fairly clear on that. That's what you've done. But it's important to realize that the right of copyright is actually fairly restricted. So, for example, if you have an industrial prototype, that is not a copyright. So, just to take an example, if you've got a wing mirror for a Ford Focus, that wing mirror is not itself copyright. It cannot be. Uh, the design documents for it are copyright. In other words, if you go into Ford's main office and you download the file from the the geometric modeling program that designed the wing mirror, then that is a copyright file, and if you take that file, then you've broken the copyright. Um, but this is an important point. Making something from a copyright design is not an infringement of that copyright. In other words, the document is copyright. You must not copy the document, but if you use the document to manufacture something, you have not infringed the copyright. So, Though the design documents for all sorts of industrial products are copyright, using them is not an infringement of copyright. And if you reverse engineer them yourself and use your reverse engineered version, you have not infringed the copyright in the original document. And there's a famous uh, piece of case law here uh, of the Star Wars knitting patterns. Um, a, a woman put a set of knitting patterns out on the web for people to knit Darth Vader helmets. And there's a Darth Vader helmet made in a rep-rap machine. Um, and uh, Lucasfilm tried to sue her for infringement of their copyright in the original drawings they made for Darth Vader's helmet. And the artist who did those for Lucasfilm obviously had copyright in his or her drawings. And they tried to say this woman was infringing their copyright. Um, but in fact, the courts ruled that this was not an infringement uh, because though if she'd made a drawing that was the same, she would have infringed the copyright. Making a knitting pattern to make the three-dimensional object was not an infringement. Another thing that's not widely known about copyright, what is widely known is that copyright extends for an enormous amount of time. I think it's 70 years after the death of the copyright holder or something. But if you're Disney and you allow someone to put Mickey Mouse on a child's pencil case, then the clock starts ticking on the copyright on Mickey Mouse. And 25 years after you first use a design on an industrially distributed product, like a pencil case for a child, then the copyright in that design disappears. So the use of a copyright object in something that's sold in that way actually restricts the time of copyright on it. Patents uh, typically have a 20-year term. And here, the exception is, again, completely explicit. <coughs> Excuse me. If you make something that's patented, but it's for your private, not for gain use, in other words, you make it in your own home, and uh, you just use it yourself and you don't sell it, then you've not infringed the patent. This is one of the locations where the law is different in the United States to the law in Europe. Um, if, it, if you use a rep rap machine in the United States to make something that's patented, then you have infringed the patent, even if you're only going to just use it yourself. In Europe, that's perfectly permitted. Another use that's permitted is experimental use. If you make something to experiment with it that's patented, in particular if you're experimenting to try and improve it, then you're allowed to do that. However, the not for gain exemption is not enough on its own. So, for example, if you're a school teacher, you've got a rep rap machine, and you use it to print out test tube racks, which happen to be patented, 
uh, for use by your class of school children, then you have infringed the patent, even though you're not using it to make money. Uh, another offense against patent is supplying the means. And this is interesting. Uh, what that means is that if you design an object that's patented and you print it yourself just for your own use, that's fine. If you distribute that design on the web, you're supplying the means to infringe the patent and you've offended against the patent. Now, there's a limit to how far that offense goes. Pretty clearly, if you sell people screwdrivers, you're supplying them with a means to infringe a patent if the patented object needs a screwdriver to put it together. And the law is not completely stupid. Uh, it allows you to sell screwdrivers and lathes. And implicitly, given that it allows you to supply a lathe, because a lathe could be used to make a patented object, and that's not an infringement, uh, rep wrap machine is obviously going to fall under that as well. So the machine itself is not going to be nailed down by people saying, this allows us to infringe patents in the same way that anybody can sell photocopiers, for example. And registered and unregistered design, um, the first thing to say about this is that parts of a machine uh, that's sold by a company that have either registered their design in those parts or, or just implicitly left the design there but failed to register it, um, bits and pieces are only protected if they can be seen in normal use. In other words, anything that's inside the works under the cover uh, cannot be protected by registered design or unregistered design. Um, and there's no protection for technical function. In other words, if a given design achieves a given technical result, then um, if you do the same technical result by a different design, you haven't infringed the, infringed the design right. Uh, there's also an exception for things that must fit to other things. So if you make a spare part in your rep wrap machine for your car, and it has to be a certain shape in order to fit with the rest of the car, then again, you haven't infringed the registered design in the original part made by General Motors or whatever it might be. And finally, the restore appearance exception. If you make that wing mirror for your car in your rep wrap machine, the wing mirror housing, and it has to be the same shape as the original wing mirror in order to restore the appearance of the car, then again, even if the original design was registered, you're allowed to do that. So to summarize all of this, the law, as far as people making things for themselves is concerned, is pretty unrestricted. You can do more or less whatever you like unless you infringe trademark or, in very, ex uh, in very restricted cases, copyright. Patent doesn't affect you. Um, registered design doesn't affect you, uh, affect you. And because you're not selling anything, you're not guilty of the passing off offense. So uh, people doing things for themselves, the law basically doesn't touch them at all, certainly in Europe. Um, once you start selling things, then restrictions start to come in on you uh, a little bit more. But even there, things are fairly liberal. OK, let's chip, ch chip on to the next thing. Uh, let's look at economics. Um, I mentioned that it costs 350 euros to get all the materials together to make one of these machines. Um, as, we, as I speak, the cheapest non-open source 3D printer that you can buy in the world is the SD300 made by Solido, and that costs 12,000 euros. Now, there's a big difference between 12,000 euros and 350 euros. Um, this is actually rather an interesting difference. Um, it's a difference that occurs for a very straightforward reason, and that is that almost all of the 3D printing technologies uh, have been patented, and they've been sold by the patent rights holders up until now, and it's just now that all those patents are starting to come out of their term. Um, however, industry has started dropping the prices a little bit, but not very much. Um, and it's going to be very interesting to see how all the open source 3D printers, the derivatives of RepRap, things like the MakerBot machine, uh, the Bits from Bytes machine, and so on, um, which are all coming in at really low costs, namely a few hundred euros each, um, are going to affect the, the main part of the rapid prototyping industry. Um, just to give you an example, uh, MakerBot, I should declare an interest here, I own shares in MakerBot, um, MakerBot make a machine in a laser cutter, uh, which is a derivative of RepRap, but it can't reproduce itself. Though it's an open source design, you can, you can, if you've got a laser cutter, you can make one yourself. Um, MakerBot uh, are, have been trading for less than a year, and they're already selling almost as many machines for much less money, almost